For those of you who are claiming this is the most important election of our lifetime, you are causing important election fatigue, and we don't believe you. Every two years, our nation's blowhards emerge from the filthy shadows of power to beat us into submission by trying to scare us into voting for them or paying with our lives. Joe Biden just said this, the most important by-election of our lifetime. By election? So you're saying this election likes the party? Yeah. He went on to say it's a choice between two vastly different visions of America. Now, to be fair, Mr. President, you need your vision checked. The country is not doing well, and you're like a blind driver on an icy interstate at night during a snowstorm with a belly full of NyQuil. Of course, we've heard this tired shtick before in 2020, and NPR headlines scream that that was the most consequential election in a lifetime, parenthetically, and this time we mean it. Oh, put a sock in it, you chowder hounds. Back then, Biden also said, there's just one month before the most important election of our lifetime. <clears throat> Obama, Joe Scarborough, Mother Jones, they all said the same thing in 2018. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both said the same thing in 2016. Enough already. Nothing really changes. It's just a bunch of power-mad old people trying to concentrate that power in their arthritic hands so they can torture us until they die. And this is not a new record at the disco. In 1888, the New York Times screeched of the race between Benjamin Harrison and Grover Cleveland. The Republic is approaching what is to be one of the most important elections in its history. Oh, save the histrionics, Susan. People's enthusiasm for the midterms has really waned. Only 48% have given this year's race a, a lot of thought. That is down from 54% in 2018. People don't trust politicians or the government or silly edicts that are supposed to shock us into action. So we pull the lever or dangle the chad for our collective savior. He's not showing up. Our nation may be in a slump, but our Constitution is strong, and it's more elastic than we give her credit for. Politicians are lacking in creativity and originality, so they resort to fear-mongering when they've run out of ideas, and that is so last millennium. If you want to vote, go vote. I don't care. The horse race is always very interesting and exciting this time of the cycle. But it lacks importance or urgency, despite what the charlatans who are in power or who so desperately want to be, what they are selling us at this late hour. You want to shock us? Abdicate your power, give us our money back, and come up with actual solutions that limit government and compound freedom. That would be worth screaming for. And that is the memo. My next guest says, democracy is on the line and on the ballot. He wrote all about it in an op-ed, hi, for The Hill. It is titled, Democracy Hangs in the Balance in the Midterms. Joining me to explain, one of my very favorites, you know I love him dearly, Fox News political analyst, Juan Williams. Hi, Juan, welcome back. Thanks, Kennedy, good to be with you. Although I think you're whistling past the graveyard. I'm not the one whistling past the graveyard. The gra if, if there's a graveyard, it's because Joe Biden took vibrancy and ran it into the ground with bad policies, bad foreign policy, and overspending. So yeah, at least I see it for what it is. If it's a graveyard, that means we're already dead. So if, if we're dead, then how is it the most important election of our lifetime? Well, I think that it, it, there's no question. First of all, let me just take it away from all the liberal media talking heads that you've been whipping up on. Let me just tell you, here's what the American people say in those polls that you were defending in the first segment, by the way. It's like 70 percent of Americans say this election is about democracy and the stability of our Constitution. It's like, you know, 70 percent of Republicans who believe that last election was based on voter fraud. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, 50% of Republicans who say, you know, it's just unbelievable that they have no faith in the outcomes of these midterm elections. And it's like 40% of all voters, Democrats and Republicans, mm -hmm. who think we're going to have more political violence after the midterms, the kind that saw Paul Pelosi 
get hammered in the head. So that's why people so think you, it's a really okay. important election. But people don't want more political violence. Uh, well, no, they, they, a few people do. A, a few very unhinged, mentally ill people, they, they do. And that's unfortunate. I don't think we need to telegraph to them things like there's going to be violence if uh, the elections are contested. So what we have now is two parties who are essentially identical, concentrating power, and when they lose, they say the election was illegitimate. That is where we are, because Republicans obviously did it in 2020. Democrats are gearing up to do it in 2022 because of people like Joy Reid who are, and Stacey Abrams who are already saying, yep, the thing is rigged. It's a bunch of Republican pollsters lying to everybody, and they're, they're tamping down expectations. Well, I mean, look, we, let's go back a ways. Election 2000, Al Gore didn't say that. He conceded defeat. It was, at, it was Donald Trump in 2016, even before the election, mm -hmm. that said if he lost, it wasn't going to be a legitimate election. And it was Donald Trump, the Republican, who mm -hmm. said in 2020 that he didn't lose I know. and then tried to launch an insurrection you're, that we saw on January 6th. So, you're you know, making I mean, my point, it's not Ron. both yeah, parties so, here. Yes, it's the Republicans. Yes, it is. Okay, so what did, what did Hillary Clinton say to Joe Biden before the election in 2020? What did she say to him? I'll remind you, but I, I will let you guess first. I don't Pretend it's game night. No, we'll go she right said, ahead. She said, what, I, I don't have it she said whatever you do, don't concede. And she said the biggest mistake she made was <laughs> conceding the election. Stacey Abrams still thinks she's governor of Georgia. She is not. Donald Trump is not president. This is a loser mentality that both parties have latched onto, that they are somehow going to call into question uh, the the veracity of the elections if they don't go their way. America should not be a country of losers. Also, we're not a country of dum-dums. And we know not every single election can be the most important election of a lifetime because if it is, that means the next one is not important and that's where people are now. Last word, Juan. Well, you know, there's just some realities that you got to pay attention to, Kennedy. Yeah. I mean, you got to wake up to the idea that you've got like 300 candidates on the ballot who say the last election was stolen. And that includes that includes a lot of people running for secretary of state mm -hmm. election officials yeah. who would be in position. I mean, Stacey to start Abrams is, is already calling so that our election <laughs> Stacey Abrams is already saying that, you know, this, this election is invalid and she hasn't even lost yet. She's about no, you to. You know what? She was. She again. Look, she was running in the last election against the man who was the secretary of state and who was shutting down uh, voting stations. So she had a case to be made. Mm -hmm. What we have Did now you? is Donald Trump having influenced and distorted an entire political party. He's, he's You're saying, running. don't pay attention, I know, but, don't get but excited. Juan, this is what drives me crazy is, I love your passion, I love your brain, Donald Trump is not president. And if my prediction holds, he's not going to be president because he's not going to run. Because the party, believe it or not, has moved past him. And we are sick of crazy old people running our lives and doing a bad job of it. I said it. Um, Juan, I'd love to see you. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, but you know what? He's still the number one choice of Republicans, isn't he? Man, I don't know, man. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent mm. woman. All right, all right. <laughs> Good to talk to you. All right. I like you a lot.